Okay, welcome people. Uh, I'm from Rocknet Studios, one of the guys. We are streaming a lot actually of uh, developing games in Godot and uh, trying to promote Godot a lot because we believe in this engine. And um, if you would come to our streams, you would type exclamation mark Godot and you would uh, be surprised. And a lot of people, uh, uh, as I have seen here already, have been really excited to see me here, new Godot users. So um, we actually come from uh, building a game in Unity. And uh, as uh, today's first speaker told that uh, he could not build a game in Unity on Linux, you can actually do it. It just requires quite a lot of hard work. Uh, and we've been uh, working on our big game already for around five years. And a uh, really, really nasty thing that we did not like is that they removed the support for JavaScript. And uh, we use that uh, code and are now uh, rewriting and fighting with Unity generics with tens of thousands of lines of code would be uh, quite, quite a hassle. So actually, uh, we discovered Godot uh, because it became quite popular at the end of the last year, well, the year before the last year. And we tried it out, uh, got really excited, and we decided to check it out. What can we do with it? Start learning it. So we got through documentation and uh, decided to participate in a game jam and make a game. Uh, which was actually in a length of month. Uh, while doing the game, we uh, really understood that Godot is something that we dig because uh, we are huge open source software supporters, all on Linux systems and using open source tools and not only open source, but really free software movement. And um, we decided that uh, we really want to promote Godot and uh, not only us make some game that people will be, wow, it's made in Godot, but uh, also through that support others who would make it. And so I came up initially with a very fundamental idea to build a tool that I felt really was necessary after using Unity. Uh, like you in Unity, you could use scene view to edit your game while it's running. And uh, basically, yeah, the idea was to build a similar tool in Godot, but with the features that I've been missing. And uh, through that, promote uh, people making larger games in Godot because uh, this tool really has a purpose uh, and the purpose is to cover the areas that took the most time and the hardest uh, work in debugging the game that we are working on. And you can uh, check it out later, ask me about that game. So I'm going to show off this uh, tool that I've been working uh, and I'm going to show it in two games. The game that we started working on that last spring, actually on the game I haven't worked on in this screen resolution, it may behave, behave a little bit weird. Also, the screen is recorded, so performance I hope is going to be okay. Uh, but, and the other one is I'm going to show you that you already can use that tool in any of your 2D games. You could also actually use it in 3D games, but uh, it's intended for 2D games. Uh, right now, so it would be not really convenient to use it in 3D games. Uh, at first, I'm going to start with a very basic um, overview of uh, going through this game that we've been working on and uh, showing just the uh, features of the uh, tool that I've called Visual Debugger. And uh, the tool is made so that you can e easily install it in. Uh, any game, basically. I'm going to show it to you in a moment. I hope that it's going to load the level in, because this game is actually pretty huge. People are, were surprised <laughs> that on GitHub you have to download a gigabyte of data. <laughs> uh, but it's more of an art asset just put in the game, so hopefully it loads in. And then I'm going to show, after this game, uh, another game which is made by a really, really talented guy with that we discovered, Securus. Uh, and his Twitter handle is Securus2010. And um, yeah, you can see here the Freya. And uh, yeah, and I'm going to show off that you can implement it in other games too. So if I would start the game right now, we would get a uh, menu screen. I could start here by right now by pressing F12, Visual Debugger, which would uh, slide out here pane on the side. And um, you can start to do already various things, but most likely I'm going to just start right now, run the game, continue running it, and just start the level to show you. It turned red. What it did, it detected that the game camera uh, is not the same game camera that uh, Godot can use, and, it, uh, and what you should do at this moment, you should probably refresh the uh, 
uh, or open and close the debugger, which automatically refreshes scene 3, or just uh, press and refresh, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But already here, in camera tab, you can do various things. Uh, you can zoom out the level and move it around whatever way you want while it's running. Uh, and you can zoom in, of course, to the mouse uh, cursor position, wherever you want. Uh, also, you can do crazy stuff like, for example, you can zoom to and uh, scale the level the way you want. For example, we could uh, do crazy stuff like this, for example, and the level uh, gets distorted completely insanely, right? And uh, that's probably not very useful, but uh, you can do things like that and go anywhere in the scene. Well, of, of course, you can also here see the total zoom, which is the gray color, and the uh, yellow bars are displaying the uh, stretch over one, over value one. And and uh, if we are going to stretch under one, we can get uh, the zoom, uh, what is the shrink value. And you can see that actually it's really helpful if, for example, I would set zoom value to 0.5 here. And uh, 0.5, uh, you could see that uh, you would zoom to uh, 0.5 here, 50% and 50% here. I hope it is being displayed normally and the text is readable. Uh, because the screen is not really, really attuned to this. So uh, also, uh, thing that you can see right away here, uh, many games can use different uh, camera encore modes, and uh, Visual Debugger tries to detect uh, the same, for the Visual Debugger camera, the same anchor mode that you would use in a game, but you can always have an option to switch it. For example, that would uh, make it a little bit weird, but yeah. Uh, anchor mode here is fixed top left. Then uh, this probably is going to remo be removed. Uh, also, I want to remind that this tool is probably alpha or pre-alpha. So any suggestions are very welcome. And our community has actually provided a loads of tips. And I have a huge list of uh, wonderful features to implement in the future. Also, you can use cursor keys to move around the level, or you can just press uh, middle mouse key and drag the level around. And of course, uh, dragging around is relative to the zoom level. Uh, there are a lot of uh, things like that which are to make it intuitive. Also, at the bottom you, here you can see the uh, world position of the mouse and uh, viewport position of the mouse uh, cursor. And uh, as I wanted to mention, that this uh, GUI, you can see right now, it's basically just a scaffolding for the visual debugger. Uh, I have actually planned to make it more uh, intuitive. Uh, so right now, but, but still. Uh, anyways, now we can do a very cool thing. We can step through the game without uh, any, any struggles, uh, as you would uh, experience, perhaps, uh, uh, in, uh, in the stepping in the Godot. Though there, of course, are some limitations, too. Also. Um, Right now, I'm going to go, go to the next tab, and I have a question to you guys. How many of you are using remote while running game and trying to debug it or change values and try what's happening the remote in the vision in the Godot? Awesome. How many of you guys are really excited how stable, uh, quick, intuitive, and uh, good it is? <laughs> Yeah, and that's one, uh, also one of the big reasons uh, to build this tool, because um, tests show that uh, sometimes you have to wait for 30 seconds or more to click and up, uh, get the updates from the remote, or a remote crashes your game so badly that you have to restart Godot to just get back to uh, the game and start running again. Right, um, so let's go to Visual Select, and here we can see something cool. We can have a selection circle here in the world. And we can actually select all the nodes that are under this selection circle uh, with the both the node name and its type. And why here is a list? Because I found it really, really annoying in Unity to select something and then click, 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 while finally you find a real selection. Here you can choose the uh, exact uh, node that you would like to inspect. For example, in this case, you would go and find, uh, for example, let's go to the, uh, well, there's probably a little bit too much information here. So let's make it smaller. And for example, I would love, love to get information about player node. And right away, you can see here, also here for the, uh, I have not really noticed in these two games problems with um, uh, having uh, 
selection enabled while the game is running, but I have uh, left this switch where you can switch on and off uh, detection of nodes under. So for example, if you have a huge scene tree, it shouldn't uh, take too much time to go through it and uh, find all the necessary information. Here, now, you can st start to visually change properties of items. For example, I can move around this node or I can do perform other transformations. For example, I can rotate it uh, in any di direction I want. I can uh, scale it. I can do negative scaling, for example, which is indicated here by negative uh, by minus. And, of course, the uh, rotations aren't broken there, too. Uh, problems which you may see here is uh, due to the uh, resolution of the screen for this game because it was intended to run in 1920 by 1080 and uh, I have not tuned it for this game. I actually finished the latest version of Debugger at 3 o'clock last night. So, <laughs> so um, uh, now the next thing I would love to probably show is that uh, you can not only do things like that, at any moment you can return to the game and continue playing it. If there are some performance issues, that is most likely because this laptop is not tested and is being recording screen. So um, uh, then um, mm, what, what I wanted to say is that mm, now you can do various things like, for example, you would love to follow the node. Now the screen is going to follow. You can zoom out, you can observe the level. For example, there is shader working in an action and you can move the level around and it's going to follow or it's going to follow from somewhere to indicate where you are moving from or it's going to follow exactly right away to the position where you are moving. Um, now, uh, of course, you can always stop and step through and uh, zoom in wherever you want to do it. Now. Uh, what should we look here is a path to the node that's probably changing uh, going to change to the in the future too and of course you can also not only follow the node that may be changed but you can always uh, s uh, select jump to node and you're going to move to that node in the world you can uh, improve the movement speed with the cursors too which I forgot to mention anyways next uh, next and probably really really useful feature that uh, many of you would enjoy using would be watches so you actually get the full scene tree loaded in uh, and uh, not only the level which is observable here and we can get to the player or any depth here and you can uh, do both vertical scrolling you get uh, the uh, the horizontal and vertical you can get the node type here and uh, also it's indicated by icons of course and uh, now for example if we would love to ex uh, explore what's happening with the player node we could actually add a watch to it. And for example, we would love to know position of this uh, node. We could add watch, and now we can see we have a uh, watch, which is uh, here indicated in the uh, node type by the icon, and we can uh, also horizontally scroll through and look that it's a player nodes, uh, player nodes watch with the name position, value, uh, this position value, and type vector2. Uh, not only that, we could, for example, also add uh, other nodes like modulate, for example, and we could see that it's a type color, value 1111, and uh, modulate watch of the player node. Not only that, we can do uh, deeper drills. For example, we would love to see what's happening with the uh, camera's position, and so we could uh, enter the, uh, for example, position of the camera, or we could enter, enter also, I don't know, transform, we can uh, return the transform of it, uh, so it's going to be actually longer line than the uh, rest of the lines, but you can still uh, see and observe what's happening there. Now, not only that, you can filter data. Uh, you can filter what you want to see here in the list. For example, you would love to see only raw data. Uh, it should be unique, and you would only want to see values, which you could then take, and for example, for later on analysis, uh, that's cool. And then if we would uh, run the game here, you c oops, uh, I should not done that. I should run it here. You can see that the actually the values are being updated. And now we can actually follow the node and we can see the values being updated for both camera and node. And you can inspect step by step what is happening with the world. And you can see the potential of it. In the future, we could reset your game in the past and try again. Or you can see the wonderful uh, coolness that is here, loading instantaneously the tree and 
having the visual debugger here in the tree itself so you could actually create automated tests you could write a test that would make the debugger perform certain actions and which you could repeat and actually do sort of a unit testing uh, while, your game, while, your, while your game is running uh, while changing initial conditions for example um, yeah and uh, and uh, probably uh, that would be initially what I would love to say about it. Um, uh, let me see if I haven't missed anything. I, I think that for this game that would be enough. And now I'm going to show to you guys when you get the overview of the tool itself that you can uh, use it in other games too. For example, Sakura's game. So, shout out Sakura2010 uh, on Twitter, his Twitter handle. And we can uh, open. He actually participated in last Godot Wild Jam and he uh, uh, go, got to sleep before the submissions ended. And his game is actually amazing. We streamed the Godot games uh, from the Wild Jam and uh, people thought that this game should have won actually the uh, competition, the 3D game. Um, and uh, so his game, he, this is different game, but this game is called Crackshot, and uh, most likely it is going to produce some sound, which is actually a pretty cool sound there in the game. Uh, and yeah, the computer doesn't want to behave very nicely when it's being re recorded through Chromium. I hope it's going to load the level soon enough. Come on, come on, Godot. Okay, cool. So uh, now, uh, if I would run the game here then let's try to uh, use it uh, in a different game while it's actually fully running, uh, fully working game. Plus, uh, different, huge difference is that that screen size was 1920 by 1080. This screen size is actually, let me see quickly to not lie to you, uh, window, and the window is going to be 400 by 225. So it means you can actually uh, scale the visual debugger size we probably would have to set to the mode to uh, have text readable but you could actually implement it basically in any game uh, which is 2d most likely at the beginning so if we would run the game and make it larger we could start the game there's a nice little character we can run around and we could ah almost died and we can do a lot of cool stuff like that, but at any moment we can drop into Visual Debugger. Here you could uh, observe that something changed, right? The problem is that uh, anchor mode for the camera was differently set. Also, uh, I forgot to say that uh, there is a uh, shortcuts already inbuilt. What you can do, you can actually press F9 to step through. So for example, this game shoots when you press left mouse click so you would not really want for the game to start shooting also you can just press ctrl f9 for the game to continue running uh, you can press f11 uh, to do center around mouse cursor so for example you can press here to this coin and the screen is going to center around the mouse cursor and you can quickly move around the level to any place where you want to observe any enemies uh, without, for example, zooming out. Of course, you can still use dragging, but it's a little bit uh, more efficient way to do it. And of course, you can zoom out the level, look at its layout, change any parameters you would like. For example, let's get uh, to this little guy here. Uh, let's, uh, for example, stop the game a little bit. Let's go to visual select. Let's uh, select this guy, uh, which is going to be probably this one. And let's just uh, make, for example, it uh, to be monster enemy let's make it to be really big one so for example you can quickly check various ideas how they would work in your game uh, this tool is intended to be more of a debugger but I actually plan in the future that we could add features like visual design uh, where you could actually more of a design your uh, game and there have been a lot of suggestions from community what people would want and actually there are a lot of features like filtering by type by name etc etc for example one feature you don't have in the remote you cannot filter nodes by name that's going to be available here too for example now if I would run the game the monster would wa uh, walk around there we can uh, return actually to game like this and you can see that monster is there and it actually collision is also at large so you can shoot him so now we can for example jump past and uh, let's not go in there uh, let's go here 
and for example we have to reach this altar we could uh, try to uh, do various things like for example what would happen if we would uh, go and change the altar's position uh, for example will be able will the player is going to be able to and we can also do that here from uh, we can select all the nodes that you do in visual select you can select them here also in the uh, scene selection right uh, but it you can see why sometimes it can be very useful while in this case it may be a little bit slow find where it is in the uh, scene structure but here we can really quickly find the uh, node and then we could for example try to put it here can we reach it with the player we could actually run it while the game is uh, we can run the debugger while the game is running and we can see that it's working we can uh, follow the altar or we can follow the uh, player so for example here yeah and uh, yeah, and you can do crazy stuff like, for example, uh, reposition a uh, player at any moment. Here we can see it's red, we can refresh the tree, we jump here, but it's not a real problem because we can quickly get back to the uh, player's position by centering or zooming out, zooming in to where it's in the world. And you can play the game while it's being debugged. And for example, uh, let me quickly get to this guy, to little girl. And um, for example, um, let's uh, set her and let's we can now play the game while it's being debugged and we can do uh, for example oops well I died <laughs> and uh, I can refresh the tree uh, and select the uh, camera mode so and uh, that's one and also one of the things I would love to uh, for this tool to be evolving with every game you can implement it in your game I'll add any features you would like to and uh, it would spark uh, good implementations for all the other uh, users of the tool too so I think it could be really exciting that it's independent of uh, any Godot version and you can just update it with your game's needs and uh, for example yeah we could also use it with camera here and we can use the player and for example let her fall down to, to her death and uh, so yeah um, I think that this would complete the short demo of the tool. I would be really, really excited uh, to have any of you to ask any questions. If you have any of your games, I would be... I'm sorry, the mic has dropped off because the wheel of the chair is over the mic. I am sorry, that's terrible. Hopefully it didn't ruin the whole live stream. And uh, so... If you have any of your games, I would be really excited to check it out. Can we get this uh, running in your game? I think it should be very simple. I made a simple GitHub repo with the debugger. You can just copy the folder in your game, add uh, VD Global to your uh, autoload, which is actually amazing in uh, actually implementation of singletons in Godot. You can add such features inside of uh, Godot really, really easy without making custom implementations of singletons. And uh, yeah, guys, you can actually also, we are streaming every weekday uh, at Rock Knight Studios, uh, Rock Knight Studios at twitch.tv. Uh, twitch and if you have any questions, do come by, ask them, and I'm going to answer you live uh, any of your questions. So uh, that's it for me for now. Thank you so much. And do you have any questions? I would be glad to answer. Yeah. Um, are there any cases in, uh, in the case you screw something really up in the debugger and... Uh, uh, the changes are being reset. As soon as you stop game, it's being reset. Actually, I have not implemented saving and exporting game state, but I intend to do it for, uh, as I said previously, visual design tool, something like that. I don't want to do everything right away, but that would be an awesome feature that you could actually save and do online editing of your levels, really. Yeah. To get to see the value of the player, yeah. do you have to na give a specific name to the, to the variable? Uh, well, you don't have to. You what you are looking at watches. That's basically getting the actual uh, uh, property of the uh, of the node, right? It's uh, looking. Does the node has this property? And it's go if it does, it's going to return all the data for you. Node, uh, watch type, watch value, wh uh, wh which node it belongs, and uh, yeah. 
and you can that's the amazing thing guys I want to repeat I've been working on the big game that we um, that been been working and it be, it has been swallowing so much time where you have to make very intricate tests for specific characters in the in a huge world where it moves around and you have to detect very very particular problem and you have to repeat it and it's amazing time saver when you can set it up the way you want and uh, do drill of many nodes and how they behave and interact between each other it's really huge time saver yep uh, yeah i'm wondering does it did you try it uh, or does it play with the uh, viewports like if you have like multiple viewports. Yeah, like actually, I have uh, not. I have uh, uh, I have written for myself. We could uh, actually quickly try to make a little demo of uh, two cameras sim simultaneously working, but I don't think that's uh, probably. I could show it later to you, yeah, yeah, especially. Yeah. So I can try it, and it does work. Sort of. <laughs> it does work, but you have to uh, make it specific for your game. For example, there are issues like if you are creating a. Uh, viewport that is a child of a scene that's under a viewport then uh, there may be a problem which is likely a problem in Godot at least I read in the github uh, that there have been discussions on that topic that for example viewport sti um, if you would run the game then uh, if you would run the debugger then run the game uh, you seemingly uh, won't be able to click anymore on debugger you have to close it open it or you could go to that viewport that is a uh, game viewport and set its GUI to off for example in remote or in the visual debugger itself uh, what's more convenient for you but yeah you can do it it works it's basically in a game you can do whatever you want in a good old game you can do it and wonderful thing is about again huge benefit think of it you can run it on any device you can actually do the bugging on any device nice. yeah uh, uh, could you please speak up a little bit yeah of course of course I'm oh, yeah. sorry yeah. That if, if I have not done you can uh, do two th downloads I have not put crackshot download but you can both download both Freya, the Wildcats, and uh, I prepared yesterday with uh, tips the uh, uh, GitHub repo for. Um, well, uh, I could, should probably have I copied it here. Hopefully, yes. Here it's going to be. I marked some notes here. So, guys, uh, you can hear see and actually come to me i'm going to share again uh, a card and you can uh, check us out on twitch and going to answer any of your questions and going to dance for you <laughs> if you're going to type exclamation mark disco <laughs> so this is uh first one is godot visual debugger with instructions pretty cool i hope it's going to open if i'm going to click on it uh, mm -mm, will it open please do open uh, maybe it's going to try to open Firefox, so it may, yeah, it's going to do in Firefox. Yeah, I do not use this computer. I gave this computer to our artist and he's struggling with it. <laughs> so, and yeah, and here you have, uh, I prepared this uh, last, last night, so um, I have not tried it 3 1 because on my big computer actually uh, 3 1 doesn't work. I have driver problems, but uh, on this computer it does work. So, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I decided you could uh, in do installation even easier. And Benny is in a house. Benny is actually uh, suggesting that he uh, may help me to make it in Asset Store, so you will be able to install the debugger from Asset Store as well. But right now, basically, installation is really simple. Uh, you could avoid even this one, but I decided that you could uh, set custom a button to call, uh, open and close the visual debugger. Then uh, there's how to use, a little FAQ of the most common questions that I thought that will be. Uh, actually, here I uh, mentioned that about viewport. And uh, yeah, and you can check us out at uh, twitch.tv Rocknet Studios. Yeah, and so again, I'm going to leave that uh, those links here so you can... Uh, I am terrible with this microphone <laughs> it's out oh, and uh, I, I, I think it's broken cool <laughs> any more questions and what about 3D? 3d it does work but the visual selection part is intended for 2d I do not guarantee that it's going to work but you can start it get whole scene 3 and do whatever you want with the scene 3 
so i have not really tried it out and that's one of the things also we really wanted to wait for a godot 3d to become uh, a bit more mature because we dive into it we wanted to become this actually started as a learning proje project in godot and we wanted to be get really good at 2d understanding godot's api what it does good what it does bad and so to really know what should we implement in that game and we actually have it in pre-production we just have to now push that unity project and finish it so that we can go fully for Godot. So, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so you talked about the watch window. Do you think we should look at uh, integrating that with like the same thing, but for you know, for example, for the radio station, so the fly with the icon. And the That's planned. <laughs> That's planned. Not yet implemented, but I have it in my to-do list. And uh, yeah, if you're going to come by and if you're going to give suggestions, I'm going to be more than happy to speak with you and uh, yeah. Maybe repeat the question Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. So the question was, right now you can uh, look at watches, the values, the properties, members of the nodes, right? And the question was, could you apply uh, functions and uh, like basically a method calls on, the, on those uh, nodes? So for example, change behavior and that's planned. Yeah, and actually those uh, node inputs are actually, you guys, I forgot to show it. You can in real time change the values. You just have to right now know the uh, form and you could uh, change the color or position, whatever you want just there. It's not just displaying, you can change them too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, you just, well, Uh, it's not it's not a Godot project. It's uh, you have to uh, follow the instructions. You have to uh, have a running game. Copy. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Really? I just opened it. Yeah, it, it worked. I, I just checked it out, so... Well, we can, we can discuss it after, after that. I'm going to be more than happy. So, guys... Yeah, yeah, we can, we can check it out. We have a time. So, um, do you guys have any, any, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I, I get yeah basically they are uh, built from those tools you have seen they are all built from scratch so oh the the scene three yeah. it's exactly the same so, so it's basically the same thing that you would see in the remote but you can uh, access it quickly you can set values quickly you can uh, debug it in various drills yeah ah 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 i got i got it i got it you mean uh, you want to when you build the game to remove the uh, visual debugger from your game right No, because Godot, uh, because Visual Debugger is a part of the game itself. It's it's not uh, in the. That's the difference uh, between, for example, Unity and Godot. For example, in Unity, if you would run the game and the game would crash, there is a likeliness that the whole Unity would crash together with the game. In Godot, you have this wonderful thing that editor and the game they are in different contexts. So if the game crashes, editor is going to still be running, and so uh, the. Uh, 
cool thing about this tool is that yeah it can crash your game but it's going to crash only your game and it's going to work with your game no matter what you can build like the controls won't work right now if you're going to put it on uh, for example Android or iPhone right but if you are going to do a little changes for the controls for example to have a GUI buttons to uh, tap on them right you're going to be able to have your Android and debug your game while it's running on Android it's just part of the game it's loaded in the auto load as a singleton in the game yeah wow wonderful question so I'm <laughs> glad uh, glad answering answering yeah so so that's it ah yeah of course Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Uh, one thing that I'm going to tell you now is that this month uh, is going to be re I won't be able to work much on a visual debugger at all because it's going to be crunch time for the uh, first beta version of the big game that we are working on. So it was actually quite a lot of work for visual debugger until this presentation and then I'm going to work on that but um, if it's a uh, priority then uh, I can uh, set it up uh, as soon as possible to start working on that right and there are a lot of things for example uh, I have not looked into if it's possible in Godot to save uh, the whole game state right and move back in the past and forward right now you could do that uh, you would uh, set specific uh, uh, watch values and it would be pretty easy to save older version and go back in the past and forward so do crazy things like that in your game but it would be limited to those nodes that you selected right and it would be cool if you would reset everything back and forward when we, we can see, I have not just investigated it as of yet. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad that the potential is great. Yeah, man, cool. Yeah, it's a simple question. Uh, I guess uh, in the future, you intend to uh, try to have it integrated directly in the Godot project? Actually, not really. Well, uh, it's it's going to be sort of, uh, as we spoke with Benny here, uh, he would really uh, love to help me out to make a uh, very easy installation from Asset Store, right? You would just one-click installation. Though, it's uh, again, right, uh, right now, it's pretty easy to install. But, uh, but really, I would love for it to evolve for any game's needs. It's under MIT. You can do whatever you want with it. It's just the same license as Godot, right? And... Um, I think that um, it, it would be more freedom. I would love for it to evolve in different versions and people would be able to communicate. But I do not know what's going to happen in the future. I hope it becomes popular and uh, uh, I hope that uh, I provided enough uh, evidence for you guys that you could see that the immense potential of it, right? What you could uh, do with it and how it could evolve in the future. Well, I, well know, I know it's still alpha, so it's, yeah, it's early, but I don't know if it's yeah. in the plans to, to maybe uh, have one... It has, not been, of, of it has not been yet in plans, but we could put in the plans, because community rules them all, man. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, not actively contributing, so you, this will have to be... Yeah, yeah but... Uh, yeah, I actually have not contributed to Godot uh, C++ code uh, anything as of yet also because of the busy schedule that we have, but I would love to. Well, I don't want to sound like I want to force a relationship, but one is a free open source engine, the, uh, the other is a very cool debugger uh, library. Yeah. <laughs> let's get this. Yeah. Uh, let's get this but it's basically, it's already there, and why not? Yeah, of course. It's just the... It's it's in working in different contexts, right? That's why I'm uh, don't see right now that connection that well. But uh, why not? We could invent like Godot is developing so quickly. Like guys, it's amazing. Uh, I converted one person. He knows who his name is. He used default. Now he uses Godot, <laughs> and uh, 
he uh, got working in Godot in a few weeks and is already making games in three hours. We are making Game Jam every Saturday. If you want to uh, participate, it's just three hours of your evening time. You can participate. Actually, this evening, guys will play games from the last one. And he actually, you will uh, be looking at his game that he made. It's amazing. And, uh, and, and, and uh, my point was that, um, that uh, yeah, that... Uh, when we tried, uh, compared his version 305, uh, we, he had the 306 and I had the 305. There was actually essential changes already in the engine, which I just updated and got already for free uh, many upgrades. So Godot is evolving so fast so that, yeah, even anything is possible. You can see that people are showing, yeah, we have some performance problems, but man, come on, a few years in the future and we are going to fight with the big guys. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Looking awesome stuff, really. Uh, not really question, but like a use I see is that you can also use it as a like a great point, right? You could in your code, for example, uh, do a little debugger thing, not not the whole thing. Um, so the debugger would open at that point and close. Ah, uh, that's a really good idea. Would that work as a flow? Like, would it stop at that point or wait for another thing to finish? We can discuss it after the probably because now it's the discussion would be probably too long about that and we could uh, look what's the best option but yeah man do come by so just uh, if I forget remind me I have to note this down man very cool feature and it should not be that difficult to implement too yeah yep Duplicate what, excuse me? Yeah, uh, ah, that's, that's actually one thing that uh, I have really trying to do with this tool. I do not want to overlap with the features that are already in Godot. Or uh, do I make something new or I improve something that uh, is not satisfactory for me. I, you can still use profiling to profile the visual debugger, debugger to debug it, and uh, editor to edit, and etc., etc. And at the same time, you can edit the game with the visual debugger. I really don't want to make fools work, right? To just repeat what's already there, because Godot is amazing. Like the scene three is like one of the God's gifts. I don't know. <laughs> but you can you cannot imagine. I I like in Unity. One of my big gripes also is that you cannot set script execution order. Uh, you can set it in the script execution order manager and you can move components around, but you cannot say which update function is going to work after which update function uh, for various nodes. And that can introduce immensely, like on a larger projects, asynchronization becomes a nightmare. For example, you can work your game working in editor and not working in a game. Working in one editor on your friend's computer not working. It's terrible. Here, oh, I have to fix that problem that I have to spend there three days ref uh, refactoring my code. Let's drag this node up here. Good. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, <laughs> my pleasure.